welcome to St. Mark's on this the celebration of the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. If you are visiting us for the first time, we are so glad that you could be with us. Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity, and blessed be God's reign, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to you, God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. The word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elijah, son of Shaphat, of Abel Mahola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazel, Jehu shall kill, and whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elijah shall kill. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray a portion of Psalms 105. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, 
and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. Then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters. His neck they put in an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He set him as master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions, to instruct his princes according to his will and to teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. A reading from the letter to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips, and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we are to proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Christ. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. With two wonderful weeks of vacation in my rearview mirror, we return to Grand Rapids and back to reality, and the church still empty from quarantine. We could never quite get away from the rest of the world, nor should we, but the scenery was just lovely water and seashore and seafood. I still have some of that getaway feeling and I'm working to keep it with me as long as possible. One of the things that vacation affords is a time to read, catching up on the books and articles that form a stack on my desk as the weeks go by. One of the books that I took with me was The Crown of Pearl Street written by parishioner Jean Warrington Heibel in 2000. There's a lot of great information packed into that little book, and I have referenced it many times. But this time, I wanted to get a sense of how the beginnings of St. Mark's were accomplished and read about the group of men and women who decided that St. Mark's would be a church in Grand Rapids, Michigan in 1836 although the formal document as such was not created until 1838, making us old, <laughs> somewhere between 182, 184 years old. It was fascinating to read about all the hurdles and challenges to building this Episcopal church, which would become the cathedral parish of the diocese, and how money to pay a clergy person and run the church and continue to expand its walls was always a huge challenge. The women of the church and the children as well would be fundraisers, the children saving their pennies, the women raising money in all kinds of creative ways to augment what was offered by generous donators or, created, or creative and devoted vestrymen, for all vestry members were men in those days. Through the Civil War, World Wars I and II, Men and women were sent to the battlefields, and some did not come home. We lost parishioners in World War I and to the Spanish flu in 1918 through 20. Those names are inscribed on the cross that sits out on our front lawn. There are other plaques for those who died in the Civil War and World War II on the walls of the sanctuary, and of course the wars of Korea, Vietnam, Iraq. There have been some tough times, and there have been many glorious times in this parish. It was the Cathedral Church of the Diocese of Western Michigan up until 1965, 
when the convention voted to move the cathedral to Kalamazoo and to build a cathedral there. That building has since been sold and there is not a cathedral presently. What impressed me also was the spirit and the strength of the people of St. Mark's. Whatever challenge presented itself, the people of the parish met that challenge with faith and courage and a strong conviction that St. Mark's would be a model and a beacon for Christ's church in the world. We are inheritors of that legacy and we are up against a time of testing of our courage courage and our resolve. When we look at today's gospel reading, we know that we have a story of testing and faith and a place to put our trust. This is one of those stories of Jesus that defies our common understanding of what is possible. But the part that fascinates me is Peter, who makes demands of Jesus several times in the Gospels, or says things that put him right in the middle of the discourse. And I think he's like all of us in so many ways. I'm not sure that I would have gotten out of the boat and tried to walk to Jesus in a storm. But I love Peter for pushing the envelope and trying to figure out what is really happening in this extraordinary situation and taking that step out in faith. He's taking a huge risk, not cowering in the bottom of the boat with the rest of the disciples. With that courage and willingness to risk, Peter gets out of the boat and walks toward Jesus. But as usually happens, Reality floods in and then doubt and Peter begins to sink. Do we not have second thoughts? Does hard not resolve, not slip away at times? Do we not begin to falter? That is when Jesus extends his hand and lifts us, lifts us up out of the water and helps us into the boat. The wind is calmed. We are safe. That is what I would like to say about this gospel. If we as a parish have been faithful and brave for all of these 180 plus years, then we will endure and thrive in ways that we do not as yet even know or understand. St. Mark's folks have always found a way and we will continue to be church in ways that will honor that heritage and also to be Christ church in 2020 because we have that conviction of people as people of faith. Some disciples looked out at that storm in the darkness of night and saw a ghost and were terribly afraid. They did not understand about the loaves and fishes or feeding so many people with so little. Their hearts were not yet opened, and they could not recognize Jesus. They are so like us. We begin to listen to the fear, and we lose our resolve. We panic, and we think that we will lose everything, even our lives. But Jesus had compassion and immediately stopped to comfort them. Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. And just as that time long ago, on a rough sea, he takes our hand, and we both get into the boat, and the wind stands down, the sea is calmed, and we are safe. One of my favorite hymns, and one that is requested frequently says, Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me on. May we take Christ's hand and follow where he leads to a place of calm and peace and assurance. Amen.
Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Please pray the Lord's Prayer in whichever version you prefer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth that is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. During this season of Pentecost, we pray to God to be with us and to hear our prayers. For St. Mark's and all that we do to offer ourselves and all we have to bring about the reign and justice of God in our midst. We pray, O oh God, hear us. For our president, our governor, and our mayor, that they and we may work toward full equity for all people and an end to racism, gun violence, and war. We pray, O oh God, hear us. For Archbishop Justin, Presiding Bishop Michael, our clergy, and all in leadership at St. Mark's. For the Right Reverend Wayne Hugland, Dana, his wife, their family, and the Standing Committee of the Diocese of Western and Eastern Michigan. We pray, O oh God, hear us. For the sick, especially remembering those on our parish prayer list found at the end of today's bulletin. For parishioner Heidi Stoneman, who is recovering from surgery today. For parishioner Sharon Bursma, who is in her final stages of life and now in hospice care. For all those suffering due to the coronavirus, those suffering from the deadly explosion in Beirut, Lebanon, and all those for whom we have promised to pray. We pray, O oh God, hear us. For those who have died and those who have died due to the coronavirus, May they rest in peace, and may light perpetual shine upon them. We pray, O oh God, hear us. For what else, or whom else, shall we pray this day? O oh God, we ask you to hear our prayers, those we have named aloud, and those which lie deep within our hearts. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you and all whom and all whom you love. Amen. Welcome again to St. Mark's this beautiful August Sunday. I ask you to keep Christian in your prayers as he's on vacation both this week and next. Wish him well as he travels and visits with family. You're encouraged to sign up for our St. Mary's Garden Project. Uh, it's a construction of some interesting child-friendly features like insect houses. More about that is on our website and in our newsletter. And you can call the church um, 
Monday through Friday and sign up for that as well. I believe the workday will be in August. If you're interested in reading The Crown of Pearl Street, there are several copies here on the reading desk at the, uh, in the sanctuary and also we'll have some copies in the front desk by the front door you could stop by. It's very interesting reading. Please know that your monetary gift is very important to our ministry at St. Mark's. Contributions can be made online at www.stmarks.org or by mail. May God bless you in your generosity. On Christostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto you. And you have promised through your well beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now 
O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. A prayer to end racism. O oh God, create in us a new mind and heart that will enable us to see brothers and sisters in the faces of those divided by racial categories. Give us the grace and strength to rid ourselves of racial stereotypes that oppress some of us while providing entitlements to others. Help us to create a church and nation that embrace the hopes and fears of oppressed people of color where they live, as well as those around the world. Heal your family, God, and make us one with you in union with our brother Jesus and empowered by your Holy Spirit. Free us from racism, gun violence, and brutality of any kind through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus. Amen. A prayer for the end of the pandemic. O oh God, hear the prayers of your people all over the world who are crying out in need for an end to the virus pandemic. Comfort those in isolation, those who have lost livelihoods, those who are sick, those who may die this day unloved or unattended. Comfort those in mourning, those for whom the virus has brought deep and utter sadness, families, villages, cities, countries. Give strength to those in the rescue and medical professions to keep them safe from harm as they work to bring safety and health to those in need. Give us all a greater sense of connectedness as we strive to be safe from harm and as we await the end of suffering of millions of people throughout the world. Amen. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us this day and forevermore we pray. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve God and all God's people. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.